Peace everyone, on Mascard here, and today I'll be talking you through the painting process of a raven standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon. But first, don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this. This soft pastel piece here was live streamed over on my Patreon. I do live streams every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so if you'd like to join in on the live tutorial sessions, I will have a link for that in the video description. Now before I begin, let me tell you what supplies I am using. The paper I am working on is Claire Fontaine Pastel Matte. This is the paper I always recommend. When it comes to pastels, a lot of people commonly dislike their experience as a result of the paper, so I urge you not to go for the cheap pastel papers. It is much safer to go with a cheaper brand of pastels than paper. For the pastels I am using, I am using Schmincke pastels and Carbothello pencils for this project. For my live tutorials, I try to stick to using just the Carbothellos because even though they are one of the cheaper brands of pastel pencils, they are still one of the best. One of the other notable tools I use for my pastel work is a sponge applicator from Pan Pastel. I used to use my fingers to do all the blending, but I found that the sponge applicator helps control the dust levels. My other blending tool is just an everyday pencil blender, you know, those rolled up paper type blenders. Oh, and of course, I cannot forget to mention my pencil sharpener. Cannot express how many times I get asked how I sharpen my pastel pencils. I use a Jakar electric sharpener. Unfortunately, it only comes with a UK plug, as far as I know. All right, so let's get to the actual painting, shall we? Uh, once I have the line art transferred to my paper, I apply a sheet of masking film. The brand of masking film I use is called Frisket. Once I have the frisket laid over my foreground subjects, I start with the background. The background has a little sky showing, but is mostly the cavernous ridges of the canyon. One of the most difficult things about this background is holding back on the details. When you're working on intricately detailed backgrounds, it's easy to add too much. Ironically, it's more difficult to do less when you have a subject with so many details. However, it is important in this case to avoid adding too much. You see, even though the background is the only thing on the paper at this point, it's not going to be the focus. The raven is what you are going to want the viewer to focus on, so it's there you will want to put the real details. This will be more evident later. Another important aspect of the background is color saturation. The scene here has a lot of lovely colors like blue, orange, and purple, but just like keeping the details out of focus, we want the saturation of these colors to be toned down. Muting these colors is what is going to convince your viewer that the canyon is back in the distance. Perfecting this level of detail along with color intensity is what's going to give your work depth. With that in mind, a good tip for evaluating your background is to just take a quick picture of it, turn it into black and white, and what you'll want to see is the light medium gray color. Uh, so you'll want to avoid like a dark gray and especially blacks in most cases. This is a general rule, so take it with a grain of salt. If you've added too much saturation, those colors will show up darker in a black and white photo. Like most things, finding the right balance will take time and patience. Even if you don't get it perfect, if you have a strong foundation, you can always adjust it later. The next aspect of the painting is the landing that the raven is perched on. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I have the raven cut separate 
in my masking film. That way I can fill in the foreground without having to work around it. I start filling in the landing with my soft pastels before switching to my Carbothello pencils. What you should notice immediately is the colors get significantly brighter in comparison to the background. This increase in saturation and value is what helps bring all of this forward in the image. I want to stress the importance of this because it is the fundamental technique for any landscape or similar subject like this. A good rule to remember is this. As objects come closer, the saturation and value increases proportionally to how close they're meant to appear. So if you can just familiarize yourself with that general rule, you'll see an improvement in your landscape work almost instantly. Now, once I have my colors laid down, I begin adding in some texture. For the final touches of texture, I use a craft knife to gently scrape from some of my soft pastels onto the surface. I use a few different colors, however, try not to overdo this. I love this technique and it is really easy to go overboard with it. Once you have some flakes on your paper, just use a clean sheet of glassine paper to press in the flakes. This does not require very much pressure at all, so no need to mush it in. After you remove the glassine, you can blend the flakes to give them a more natural look. Now it is time to move on to the featured subject. After removing the masking film from the Raven, I use two colors. I just start with black and gray. It really isn't until the very end I add additional colors into the bird. By simplifying the color palette, I can focus on the texture and details. I start out using the black to preserve my line art. That way I don't have to redraw anything later. My goal starting is to get the paper covered. To do this, I use the black pretty much everywhere, knowing I can lighten areas later. I'm not concerned if I go too dark anywhere. The other important task is maintaining a disciplined pencil direction. Even though I'm just covering the paper with black, there will always remain a visual implication as to what direction the pencil was moving when it was colored in. Because of this, I always make sure I move my pencil that aligns with the direction the feather texture would be seen going. I do this even when the area is just flat black. You can see the effect that this has later on. Once I have the foundation of black and gray complete, it is time to add some tonal colors. Perhaps my favorite part of this project. Uh, initially, I went with a nice blue and sandstone color. The blue reflects the sky and the sandstone reflects the ground. However, in the midst of adding these colors, I just couldn't shake the compulsion to add a rich grape purple. So that's what I do. So overall, I incorporated three new toning colors on top of the black and gray. Once I had them laid down and blended, I finished with a touch of white for some final highlights. All right, everyone, here is the finished pastel painting. I hope you enjoyed this project and learned something along the way. Please give it a thumbs up and a share for me. Leave a comment or question below. And if you want to learn more from me, you can do that by joining me on Patreon, where you get to see these projects live every Tuesday and Thursdays. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.